Hey, I'm James Robinson. This is my studio in Port Chalmers, Dunedin. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about the work that won the Wallace Award at some point, I believe. Um, I called my one Tanifa Dragon Qigong Notes uh, Spirit Bones. And um, so, what's all that about then, eh? Well, um, I suppose I've got a um, habit of collecting information um, little personal internal narratives, uh, thoughts, you know, that's a peculiar trait of incessant ego that might want to value its own little traces, um, perhaps seeking identity even, legitimacy. Um, bad habit, but nonetheless it turns itself into, um, you know, little fractions and uh, parts of wider things that you can stick together and um, I haven't got any of the little doodles in this room um, I was going to show you my little graphic narrative doodles and um, instead I'm showing you what I'm actually passionate about which are these uh, larger scale visceral um, feral psychedelic totemic canvases uh, and I suppose the Wallace Wood award winning Tanifa picture did actually encompass that there was a sort of totemic uh, larger figure on one side um, for me um, there's transitions of loss, grief elemental spiritual juxtapositions of a process of soul that might not be just this life uh, but certainly is one that we're all in together at the moment. And what I mean by that is a lot of this work is talking about environmental calamity um, and a sense of indigenous loss of a purpose place inside purely a economic framework of value. Uh, something we all share of course and I suppose I, I am an artist that um, has spiritual and uh, holistic principles that underlining my sense of wanting to be in a whole and valuable life. Um, I suppose if I can locate the most important thing behind my practice, it's not actually the objects, it's the intent of trying to value the process that I'm in as a being. I'm alive, you're alive, life, and it's not mine, you know, I am a little part of the eternal, for a moment, it's a little borrowed situation, and that's what really turns me on about art, you know, is that in my little lifetime, my little shutter moment, my little digital, digital pixel, in the bigger picture of things, I get to leave a remnant, a stain, an image, uh, a ghost, an echo of uh, vibration, a thought, or a life that's attempting to live with some integrity, uh, getting it wrong a lot of the time, and then remembering what might be right. And because it's a forgetting and a remembering, because it's a grief and a praise, because there's a love and a loss, the work isn't purely rational. The work is talking around deeper universal human truths and uh, plays with that. So when you look at my picture you'll see a lot of little characters and cartoons all gesticulating and doing things. Um, that's like my head talking to you now. But I think what our hearts do is they feel and they know. The head thinks and it tries to control and it tries to dictate what reality is whereas the body, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the spine 
they know they are. So what's that got to do with uh, making visual imagery? It's a battle of trying to define what's most real in the realm of the mind, which is pretty unreal. It doesn't take long of having an art practice or any kind of practice if you're self-aware to know that most of the things that we do is actually projections of what we are and what we've been given, the scripts we're given about place and social conformity. So I suppose one can learn quite a lot from an individualistic sort of going inward process. Um, I'm making these little doll things at the moment. Um, you know, they just kind of hack together little castaway objects. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying them. It'll be a part of an installation somewhere at some point. Um, so you know, like what you're seeing here is sort of gestation of of material, and this this for me is a small studio, and I've got many many series going on simultaneously. Um, like with the little pictograms in the in the Tanifa picture, they're kind of like the little binary notes. They're like sort of um, hieroglyphs, um, you know, like Chinese characters are you know little glyphs. Um, so what they expand into is the larger sort of elemental uh, figurative work or, or suggested figurative work. So I'm very into being um, part of my environment, my, our, our Pacific legacy, if you like, Ooh, legacy, um, you know, of an elemental deconstructed kind of notion of what Europeanness is. Um, or European art is. Uh, I can't claim any kind of uh, tribal cultural uh, legitimacy either. Um, thank God, because then I would also be trapped inside a sort of a, a cultural precedent, a paradigm in which to conform or not conform. The freedom I have as an artist is is um, reinvention, uh, chewing it up, making it my own. Um, Tony Far Dragon. Um, was a series of notes I took in my uh, Chinese Qigong training class lectures and um, I sewed them together and there were a lot of ways to read that work. Um, it's a format I keep coming back to actually, the, the hanging the vertical strips. Mm. Um, recently I, I've been uh, at festivals and things, and I, I fasted at one for a long time, and I found that quite. Um, so I made a little artist book, uh, and it, you know, it's the same kind of thing. It's these little pictograms. Oh, it's the lounge, yeah, bedroom, yeah. These little spacier spacier pictures don't know is this going on too long that chimes chicks yeah um, yeah, so, you know, like, I sit in the morning and I, I do these. Don't know, they're good, they're bad, they're not. I would call them esoteric cartoons. Um, but the other larger abstract deconstructed work kind of has a lot of sort of implied narrative, but it's, um, so this is, this is, you know. Anyway, I really like them. It'd be great if people brought them one day somewhere. Got a show coming up at Paper Graphica pretty soon. Big plug. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, with your work, you know, I sewed them together. I hadn't done that before. Um, for some reason, you know, New Zealanders have always sort of liked the cartoon. Uh, you know, McCann, case in point. You know, 
as soon as he started getting a bit more metaphysical with the way you know his visual media looked, uh, people, uh, the Kiwis didn't really get it anymore. But you know, while it's a cute cartoon, people can get it because we're a sophisticated lot. No, there's 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 um, upsides and downsides of every uh, cultural thing. But um, it is harder to speak. It is harder to speak in a sort of um, freeform abstraction, uh, metaphysical content, personal content, um, elemental psychogeography. Uh, this 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 kind of notion of um, you know, and it's classic terrain. It's not even cutting edge. I mean, it can be cutting edge, but um, you know, m my real work uh, is a little bit a little bit harder for people to see, but might be my fault for making it big. Mm. I really like this one because it's like I don't know if you can see it. Don't know what this camera's like. It's a hundred dollar Dick Smith camera. Cause I'm so flash. Anyway, look, I had a hell of a worried day today trying to get it right for people um, managing things and making things and not being heard and wanting to be heard and not making the best art you can and getting a whole bunch of bills all at the same time and um, it's just life really but I mean sometimes being an artist is like wonderfully wonderfully romantic and you get to drink coffee all day with chums and wear silly clothes and uh, uh, then then it gets to being mm, how do I make this uh, a viable career and how do I learn to talk business and how do I learn to talk curator when um, actually I'm a you know bit of a meditation um, uh, mystic who's quite private and shy and yet has a extroverted sense too and you kind of you kind of end up going well, you know, you're not going to be around long, so you might as well do your job. And um, one of the ways I I get to function is by sending discs of self-interview processes to small crowds and posh villas. And um, God bless you. Thanks for your time. Do I believe in God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I do. Um, not so keen on the word. You know, great lyric by a guy called Bill Callahan. Um, God's a word. The argument ends there. Of course, Sanskrit folk would say that. You know, the word, the vibration, the underlining all life, is of course sen essential, and all material form is just a vibration of. Uh, varying energy and informations and um, so life and universe tends to be my take on it um, Tanifa of course is a uh, protector monster and um, well maybe life itself does actually need a bit of protection uh, in, in our current cultural um, maelstrom of um, destructive tendencies addictive behaviours and um, short term unsustainable um, economic rape uh, of everyone and everything and um, it's not really on is it um, so art being some bastion of the human heart and soul um, sort of should be talking about some of that stuff um, and, uh, but also trying to uplift and um, enshrine beauty and purpose and meaning as well and you know um, you're just a bit of a nutter trying to do all, all of that and you know getting it wrong and getting a bit arrogant and getting a bit self-defeating and, and keep keep going really hey hey score a try son okay see ya god bless again